in order to decarbon these things you can just use a bucket of water but in this case I'm going to have a stream of water going on the piston uh, just to, to show you how I decarbon these things which to me seems to be the easiest way to do it. I, I have done it in a parts washer with kerosene but water seems to work just as well. You take the like wet or dry sandpaper and you just you just start rubbing that carbon with that. And you see how it's taking it off there? There's really nothing to it at all. There's different ways of decarboning things. One way is use an easy off oven cleaner. That that helps sometimes, especially cylinder heads, you might use uh, it's a spray on stuff they use for cleaning ovens in the kitchen. And that takes it off there too. But uh, but then you'll be able to see anything that's written on here or stamped on it. This uh, carbon is a little bit oily. It's, it's not a very hard carbon and it, it doesn't sand very well. It's kind of plugging up my sandpaper here. A little bit of soap might help. Or like I say, a lot of times I'd use kerosene and that that works good too, but just a bucket of water will work. There you can see how it's cleaning up real easy. And that's the, the best way to do that. On here I can see now where it says top or something. Got a P on it. You can make that out. See if I can read that. It's just a P. Just a P. That's all it says. P right there. On this side. Uh, you know what it is? I stamped that in there. I stamped that in there. That means PTO side probably. See? That's what that is. It's still got my snap ring in there that I told you I left in there so I could tell which way it goes in. You can't mess up on these anyways because the Rotax has this extra hole, which is a transfer port hole. The gases go through this hole from this way, come out of this hole and squirt up into the cylinder through that, through that hole right there. That's what that's all about. So, anyways, I hope that hope that shows you something about how to get the carbon off there anyway. The water is just to try to keep that gooey black carbon. This is definitely soft carbon. It's It's got some oil in it. It's a little hard to sand. Usually it comes off there even faster than that. A lot faster. Now uh, you can see I polished polished up the carbon off of uh, the Rotax piston. Uh, you'll probably feel if you run your thumbnail up and down these it'll feel like a record player or something and you might say well that's not machined too well but here's another one out of a hearth engine it's the same way if you run your fingernail up and down there it feels like a record player and this this is done intentionally that's supposed to hold a little bit of oil in those grooves that they've got they machine that real coarse around there on purpose so that it holds a little bit of oil I've seen them with uh, little pits in there I don't know where they do that with EDM or what not that they they'll have little dots you'll see all over the piston sometimes they'll just have a cross hatch on the piston like it was done with a hone of some sort working on the outside of this uh, but it's just for oil retention is all that's for uh, now this hearth engine uh, okay this this is out of the Rotax 582 it's got 1400 hours on it so this one's out of the hearth engine it has four hours on it. Obviously it's seized up. It didn't get too far. But they're the same bore. You can put that piston right in the same cylinder. It's, it's the same bore. But of course you couldn't really interchange them because the distance where the uh, wrist pin is 
to the top of the piston is different uh, and that of course would make this piston run up a little bit higher than that one and uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be useful or suitable for that also I noticed that the hearth doesn't use the dikes ring on the top and I think those dikes rings work real good because they don't get stuck I don't know what caused this to seize up I, I would say that it got too hot maybe uh, the piston obviously grew in this direction this came out of a hearth uh, they call it a 2706 and it it was uh, you know made so that there was hardly any cooling fins on it that's what amazed me they have a blower a real high-speed blower they sound like a jet airplane when they're coming towards you but uh, a real high-speed blower blowing a lot of air over the cylinder with very few fins and they don't have any sort of uh, ducting to make the air go behind the cylinder so I would say it makes one side of the cylinder really cold and the other side really hot and I got an idea that their cylinders don't stay round at all that's what I would think uh, they used a flat belt I think on the fan I think that's how they got that fan to turn so fast with a flat belt on it anyways uh, the hearth didn't last too long so the guy that had it he went back to the Rotax of course and, and uh, uh, this one seized up you can't save these pistons but it's a good example of showing what a, a seized piston looks like uh, when they seize up they're gonna get they're gonna pick up metal and this metal here would be found inside the cylinder and uh, some of these uh, some of these engines run uh, like they call it Nika sill it's they're trying to run an aluminum cylinder and not put any uh, cast iron liner in it or anything like that which seems like the ideal situation because the aluminum cylinder and the aluminum piston would expand at the same weight rate if you if you could keep them from seizing up so they do this Nika sill treatment to it and a long time ago they used to chrome plate I've had some motorcycles with chrome plated bores but uh, they seem to work all right until like the plating starts flaking off of the bore or something like that. I I don't know much about the Nika sill, what that is or how it holds up, but uh, I'm skeptical. Let's put it that way. The idea is really good to get them both to expand at the same rate, but I'm a little skeptical as to how they hold up. But anyways, that's the difference between the uh, Rotax and the uh, the Hearth. On the subject. Uh, pistons here's one where if they don't use good oil you can see that these rings they're nice and free but they got a lot of burned oil around the top of this piston uh, on the bottom inside uh, I think probably whoever was running this was not running the proper oil and not not a good two cycle oil whatever it was he ought to switch to something different the rings didn't stick that's that's amazing to me that the rings are so free on there like that but uh yeah but anyways this this carbon is is really no good plus i think they were leaking it got so much black down under these rings down here and uh when i look at it it kind of looks like the the rings maybe weren't seated just right or weren't pressing evenly because I can see a difference in the way this this was hitting on the side of the cylinder right here so and the same on this side you can can you I don't know if this camera will pick this up or not but there's kind of a narrow spot in the wear right there like that that cylinder that it was in was egg shaped or something it it could be the cylinder wasn't the right shape and that might be what happened to that but it sure got some burn oil down past it and I thought I ought to tell you what I used to clean out the the ring grooves to get these grooves clean in there uh, whenever you go to the dentist I use a always ask them for a dental pick I mean you're paying that guy a lot of money to clean your teeth and they usually got some old dental picks laying around and you can't beat the ones that the dentists have they're they're good ones some of the ones you buy at the flea markets or Harbor Freight or something may not be quite as good a quality as these. But, uh, and, and you can use it for cleaning the rings too. Like this is one of those Dykes rings that goes on the top of this one. And there'll be carbon maybe in these corners here. 
and you go around with this little dental pick and you can hear it see it's scraping that carbon right out of there and that's what I used to put that ring and then you can put that ring back in there and run it again it once you get the carbon off it'll be all right but uh, uh, it's it's the carbon that causes the problems but I do think that this oil that I'm using gives a lot less uh, a lot less carbon and I thought I'd uh, show you what it is I'm using which is this stuff here this Penn's oil marine uh, I'm getting that uh, over at the Wally world as they call it let me pan back a little bit here with this thing but I'm getting it at uh, Walmart uh, and of course you can have it shipped to you too I'm sure they sell it online uh, it's TCW3 oil uh, it's a uh, parasynthetic it's got synthetic blended with mineral oil in there and I like that idea because some of the synthetics let them rust like crazy inside your engine won't be so clean and neat looking and uh, especially on an airplane which might set all winter and everything so it's uh, got uh, mineral oil and synthetic and uh, it, it works real well I'm pretty happy with that stuff I'm gonna keep using that I think that works real well since I can't get the air-cooled stuff anymore and uh, and I think this works better than the air-cooled. 